Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're back once again with our sponsored monthly video from Plex. And today we're going to be exploring Gemini Lake a little bit more. If you missed my last couple of videos, we got in a couple of these Gemini Lake Nucks that are running with uh, the new low-end chipset from Intel. And what we're going to be doing is seeing how well these little boxes do for hardware transcoding in Plex. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, what Plex can do insofar as transcoding is concerned, it can, in real time, uh, make a large video smaller so that you can play it on a low-end device that can't really maybe play a Blu-ray video at full speed and full resolution. Uh, in other instances, you might want to be able to watch things outside the home on a cellular network, and what'll happen is Plex will make that video smaller and then stream it out to your device in usually just a couple of seconds, but you really need a device that can do that in hardware where that process is accelerated and uh, that will also allow you to have more streaming clients. And what we're going to be doing is seeing how this new uh, Gemini Lake architecture handles that. We're going to have three different videos we're going to transcode at the same time. Uh, one is an MPEG-2 video recorded off of my HD Home Run Prime over there. Uh, in full disclosure, they are an occasional sponsor here on the channel. Uh, that one is 1080i MPEG-2. Uh, so it's going to de-interlace that video and then uh, squeeze it down into a smaller form factor, essentially. We're also going to be looking at a Blu-ray MKV file. So that is a Blu-ray file, usually 30 or 40 megabits per second. We're going to squeeze that one down as well simultaneously. And we're also going to look at an HEVC H.265 4K Blu-ray rip here from my new Star Wars movie, and we're going to play that one back as well, squeezed down. So we've got three different codecs that we're going to have the NUC here uh, hopefully transcode in real time. We'll see how well this one does, and then we'll compare it to the other one we looked at. Uh, this one in the video here, for most of what you're about to see, is a dual-core J4005 processor. So this is their lowest-end version uh, of this new chipset. So we'll see how well, well it does here, and then we'll look at the uh, quad-core J5005 NUC as well towards the end of the video. And before we get into this, in the interest of full disclosure, both NUCs being discussed here on the video were purchased with my own funds, but this video is sponsored by Plex but they are not reviewing this content before it is uploaded and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it. Okay, so we are gonna get going here. Now, the first thing I want you to know is that we are running Linux on the NUC and the reason is that uh, for whatever reason, the current build of Plex on Windows did not detect the hardware transcoding features of the Intel processor inside of this new NUC. It must be a, uh, an update that we have to get for that to work. So uh, note we are running Ubuntu, and it actually was a very nice installation process, and the operating system here is feeling really solid on this NUC. So if you are you know, looking for a second computer, uh, Linux might be worth trying before you uh, spend some bucks on a Windows license. I've been very pleased with how uh, easy it was to get it installed, and it's been very, very solid here, even with this nightly build that I've got running on it right now. Uh, one other thing to note here is that uh, the iPad right now is playing back that 4K Blu-ray file uh, from the NUC as I talk right now, and uh, it is not doing any transcoding yet because I wanted to just note the color here on screen. Uh, this iPad is an iPad Pro 10.5. It has HDR built into its display, uh, so the colors look correct on here, but when I start transcoding, they will not because Plex is not able to uh, convert essentially that 4K HDR video to an H.264 non-HDR uh, movie. So although we'll get the transcoding here working with this H.265 file, uh, we are going to see the colors not be correct, and that might be something they can fix in the future. So just note that when we start the transcoding. Uh, this video is about performance, not necessarily the quality of the color that will come out uh, after we start working on that H.265 file. And one last note is that hardware transcoding requires a Plex Pass at the moment. Uh, so you do need to subscribe to that for that feature to work. I covered how to activate that feature in my last video, so if you want to jump over to that one, even though it involves 
involves a network attached storage device. The process for enabling hardware transcoding is the same on a computer, whether it's running Linux or Windows or anything else. And it does require an Intel processor with QuickSync built in for it to work. It doesn't, doesn't work on uh, AMD chips just yet. So uh, just bear all that in mind. So let's get to doing some transcoding here. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is adjust the playback settings here. We're going to go from the native resolution here, which is 51 megabits per second at 4K. We're going to drop this down to uh, 1080p here at 12 megabits per second. And uh, you can see it already started playing back. The colors now are going to be off due to that issue I mentioned a little earlier in the video here. And let's jump over to our uh, system monitor here on the NUC, and you'll see that uh, we're eating up about 50% of the overall processor here, but it is uh, successfully transcoding this file, and we'll verify that it's doing a hardware transcode of that uh, in a second here. Uh, so next, I'm going to go over to my laptop, and I'm going to start playing back uh, the Blu-ray MKV file. Remember, this is an H.264 movie, uh, so I'm going to resume it from where I last left off here, a little Phantom Menace. And we'll see that video starting to play back here. And uh, by default, because I'm on my local network, it is not yet transcoding the video. So I'm going to go over here and enable that. Uh, so you can see right now it's running at its original 37 megabits per second. I'm going to switch this over to 1080p at 12 megabits per second like the other video. Uh, and then we will see uh, what happens to our CPU utilization here on the NUC when that starts up. So as you can see here, we're jumping up a little bit here to about 80% or so. Uh, and now I'm going to take out my uh, iPhone here and begin the process of getting that working. So we're going to run that MPEG-2 file that I have on here. So I'm just going to tap on that, going to click on play. And I'm also going to repeat the process I did before, which is going over here to playback settings and we're going to change this one to that same resolution we did on the other ones just to be consistent. And we'll hit that. Uh, we'll back out of that and uh, start playing back the film here. Let me turn the volume down. And now we've got uh, all three things playing at once. And it looks like we are getting uh, smooth frame rates on all of them. And if we switch back to our performance monitor here, you can see we are uh, definitely hovering close to about 100%. We're utilizing about 80% right now uh, of that processor. but uh, everything here appears to be transcoding just fine. I spent a good amount of time on this yesterday, just testing this and letting it run for a while, and it remained at that consistent level of uh, CPU utilization uh, using the hardware transcoding, although it looks like my MPEG-2 stream is having a little bit of trouble here, which it didn't do last night, but it looks like it just sped, uh, sped back up again. So you might run into a couple of little glitches here and there as things kind of cash up, but uh, generally, in my experience here, uh, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, and, and H.265 all seem to be working just fine here with hardware transcoding on this dual-core NUC. But I really wouldn't push anything else on this because when something maybe hits the system or you try to load up a web browsing window or something like that, any bit of CPU usage right now might actually impact our performance here. So uh, just be advised that you probably want to uh, limit it to about three transcoding streams simultaneously and provided nothing else really hits that little dual core machine, uh, you should be fine with that. So I want to show you now how to verify that uh, you are indeed uh, using hardware transcoding on your Plex server. So let's take a look at that. So to verify that we are in fact hardware transcoding all three of these videos, what I'm going to do here is go over to this status icon that you will see on your Plex web interface. So let's click on that real quick. And uh, what we'll get here is a uh, look at everything that is currently streaming from this particular Plex server. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see better. And what you'll see here is first the iPhone, and we've got uh, video transcoding MPEG-2 to H.264. And we know we're using hardware transcoding because we're going to see this little HW uh, next to that transcoding action. So it looks like it is successfully hardware transcoding that one. If we go over here to the iPad, you can see it's transcoding HEVC uh, to H.264, and it's doing that in hardware as well. So that is good. 
And then if we jump over here to the uh, Chrome web browser that's playing back that Blu-ray MKV, you can see here that it's also transcoding H.264 to H.264, basically making that file run at a lower bit rate. So uh, all in, we've got three very different codecs here uh, all working uh, without really any issues. And I think, again, this is about the limit that this particular system can support, but it is doing it, and it's been doing it very consistently uh, in my testing here. And let's just jump out back here for a second and see how it's doing. Uh, when I'm moving windows around and stuff, you can see that does have a bit of an impact on the processor here. So you do want to be careful with uh, what you're doing on this little server when you have a bunch of stuff going on at once. But uh, generally, we are staying well below or sort of below 100%. So let's move on now to the quad core Intel NUC and see how it does with the same exact test. So last night I set up the same exact test with the laptop, the phone, and the iPad. And on the quad-core machine with that hardware transcoding going on, uh, we were doing better, which is to be expected. So you can see with those three streams going, uh, rather than being at around 80% or so of our total CPU usage, uh, we were able to keep things generally around 60 or 50% or so, which I think is pretty darn good. So I think you could probably squeeze a little bit more out of that J5005 NUC versus the J4005 processor. So those extra cores and probably a little faster clock speed are making a bit of a difference here. But overall, I remain impressed with how well this Gemini Lake hardware is working. It really is uh, a lot faster, I think, than the prior generation and certainly a lot faster than the generation from about two years ago. We're seeing a really rapid development uh, of these low-end chipsets. And I'm really eager to see uh, what else we can do with these when we get some more options for how these Gemini Lake computers will be configured. I think we'll be seeing these in NAS boxes, for example. We'll see other low-cost PC options. And overall, I remain pretty excited about this because it gives us a lot of things to play with and experiment with and talk about uh, here on the channel. So that's going to do it for this first look at Plex running on the new Intel Gemini Lake hardware. We'll, of course, be exploring this some more in the weeks to come. If you have questions, leave them down in the comments below but we also have a very extensive playlist now of all the Plex content that I've produced over the last three or four years. Uh, you can find that in the video description down there. You can also join my Facebook group at lon.tv slash Facebook group where we've got a lot of folks who are experts in this kind of thing who might be able to lend you some support. And if you are interested in picking up a Plex Pass, definitely use my link, lon.tv slash Plex Pass, because it will help the channel uh, while you also get yourself uh, upgraded to something that can let you do the hardware transcoding on your own devices. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the lon.tv supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast. Chris Allegretta and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.